the Golf Screen Guild Theater. And your host, Roger Pryor. Hi, everybody. Your neighborhood good golf dealer and the Gulf Oil Companies again welcome you to the Gulf Screen Guild Theater. Got a great cast for you tonight. Ginger Rogers, Margaret Lindsay, Clark Gable, Spencer Charters, and of course your old friend Oscar Bradley and his Gulf Orchestra. By the way, I, I was lucky enough to catch a sneak preview of Gone with the Wind the other night, and I know you'll all be glad to hear that Clark Gable is terrific as Red Butler. I haven't any picture news on Ginger Rogers or Margaret Lindsay at the moment, because since Ginger finished my Fifth Avenue girl for RKO and Margaret got through with British intelligence for Warner Brothers, both of the girls have been taking a well-earned rest and going to the dinner's matches. And now in the moment that remains before the lights dim and the curtain rises, I just want to remind you that the Gulf Screen Guild Theater is most unusual. Because every single cent of the money that Gulf would ordinarily give to the stars who appear on the stage of the Gulf Theater is given to the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Given to build a home for those members of the motion picture industry who can't provide for themselves anymore. And now, as stage manager of tonight's comedy drama of Hollywood, Imperfect Lady, written by Charlie Palmer, my job is to set the scene and tell you the cast of the play is a quartet of star-spangled names from the great Luxor Studios. Manny Mason, the producer, is played by Spencer Charter. Lisa Garin is Margaret Lindsay, Clark Gable is Jerry Gates, and Ginger Rogers is Donna Brown. I, yes, yes, I'm in it too. I play the part of Riddle, your Hollywood correspondent. The curtain goes up and we hear Riddle broadcasting in the lobby of the Carthay Circle after the preview of the Luxor picture, Southern Cross. Well, I guess that just about lines up this broadcast. This is Riddle, your Hollywood correspondent, speaking to you from the lobby of the Carthay Circle. This was the preview of Luxor's Southern Cross, said to be the most stupendous, most colossal, most lavish spectacle ever put on the screen. Produced by Manny Mason, starring Lisa Garen, and written by their great team, Donna Brown and Jerry Gates. There they go now, right out through the lobby, bowing and smiling to friends and admirers. As they wait for their cars, they're congratulating each other on the world acclaim that will be theirs. The four happiest people in Hollywood tonight, are, without question... Now, Lisa, it wasn't your fault the picture was a flop. Of course it wasn't my fault, Manny Mason. It was the production. I spent a million dollars in that production. It was a script. A script. You okayed every line of dialogue I wrote. Manny and I are blaming you, Jerry. We were ruined by a poor story. My story, you mean? It was your story, wasn't it, Miss Brown? I thought I smelled a flop when I read it, but Manny said it was the incinerator next door. Well, I thought it had come down to me. The production, the acting, the dialogue were just swell, but my story laid an egg. Is that it? What's the matter, Donna? Can't you take it? Sure, I can take it, but not the way you dish it out. Just like a woman, you're taking it personally. All right, then, let's get personal. Lisa Garen has turned you from a writer into a rubber stamp. You don't say. You didn't write the dialogue. Lisa rewrote it. No, did she? Yes, and I'm walking out. Go ahead and walk I'll out. I'll never war work for Luxor again. Is that a promise? Or with you either, Jerry Gates. Huh. You're breaking my heart. Good night. Good night. Look, Manny, six months ago, after that turkey, I told you I was through. Now, done. And count me out. I'm not taking off on another flop. Jerry, please. My story a flop where you haven't even read it. I thought you said goodbye for good, Donna. I did, but Manny socked me with a contract when I wasn't looking. Uh, that's a good story. Why, why not use it sometime? Look, Jerry, with Donna's story and your dialogue, we can't miss this time. Well, I can close my eyes and see an Academy Award. Well, open them up and see the bitter truth. It's no soap, Manny. Why, uh, this is going to be an awful disappointment to Lisa Garen. Lisa Garrett? Well, what's Lisa got to do with it? She's going to play the star part. Now, wait a minute, Manny. You're not going to put her in my story. Well, why didn't you tell me you were going to cast Lisa, Manny? I just thought of it. Well, of course. Lisa puts a different light on the whole thing. Then you'll do the screenplay? Well, sure. I'll take a crack at it. Oh, you'll take a crack at it? Yes, I'll take a crack at it. All right. What do you mean, all right? Count me in, too, Manny. You'll work with Jerry? I wouldn't miss. Not if Garen's going to be the star. If we work together, it'll be done my way. Your way? Then we'll have a picture. Like Southern Cross when you and Lisa gave me the double cross. Let's leave Lisa out. In my treatment, she'll be out all right. Now, that's the way I like to see writers get along. All right, Jerry, you don't like the speech. Speech? Since when did the word yes become a speech? Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, and it finishes off the sequence. Yeah, and it also just about finishes off Lisa Garrett. Return trip. 
We're back to Lisa again. She has to have something to say, unless she wanted to express herself in sign language. No, she'd never be able to think up the sign. Just listen to this dialogue you've given her. Uh, yes. Uh, no. Oh, really? Oh. Well, she's got one long speech. Yeah, you mean where she says thank you. Mm-hmm. And if she says it the right way, it'll be her big opportunity. Oh, look, Jerry, I want this picture to be a success. Just because you're holding hands with Lisa Who Gar- said so? I like Lisa. I respect her work. Fan number one. That doesn't mean that every word is written with a throbbing heart. Okay. Let's get on with the writing. And for the 15th time today, let's keep personalities out of it. Jerry, it's Lisa. Open As I said, let's keep personalities out. All right, Lisa. I just knew you were dying for some tea. Oh, hello, Donna. Oh. Well, that's nice, Lisa. Only look, we're right in the middle of a tough scene. Oh, well, you always work better after tea, doesn't he, Donna? Does it? Everyone does. Let's see, you like it strong, don't you? Yes. Did you just get on the set? Yes, and I'm utterly exhausted. Such a day. Strong or weak, Donna? Strong, like I'm trying to be. Now, about the scene, Jerry. Oh, you must let me see it. You know, I almost feel that I've had a part in the actual writing of this picture. You have, definitely. Oh, you're sweet. Now, Jerry takes two lumps of sugar. How about you, Donna? Now, I'm a lemon personality. I'll take over the typewriter and do the first draft, Jerry. Oh, I do hope you're doing one of my scenes. Of course, I don't want to criticize. But some of the dialogue sounds as though it were being written by someone who wasn't, well, sympathetic to my work. I'm saving my sympathy to give you after the preview. Look, girls, girls, I know tea's important. But if we don't finish this scene for tomorrow's shooting, there may not be any preview. Then let's talk it over. You see, I definitely feel I'm not getting what I want. If you two don't mind, I'll work in the next office. Oh, but this concerns you, Donna. For weeks now, I've been trying to give you my best thoughts on the characterization. And for weeks, I've been taking them like capsules, morning and night. But you're writing me too vague. You're losing sight of my naturally vibrant personality. Oh, Lisa, Lisa, maybe we're not talking about the same script. I thought the character was spiritual. That was my impression, too. Spiritual? If you write me any more spiritual in this next scene, I'll take off. Now, look, Lisa. Where is the glamour the public expects of me? Where is my appeal? You tell us. We'll work together from now on. You go ahead and write, and I'll sit here and give you my ideas. More tea, Jerry? Yes. Strong. Donna, double strength and a handful of crackers to crumble. Jerry, do you realize we're almost done? As soon as we crack this last scene, the job's finished. Yes, you know I'm kind of sorry. So oh, my, Jerry. Hasn't seemed like work. We've had a lot of fun these last few weeks. Yes, we have. Well, I suppose we'll work on other things. Either. I hope so. Isn't as though we'll be saying goodbye for good when this is over. No. Maybe we could, well, call each other up once in a while. Sure, sure, we could do that. Jerry. Yes, Donna? Uh, nothing. I guess we'd better get on with this last scene. Yes, I guess we better. I've got it sketched out here on paper. You probably won't like oh, it. Oh, sure, I'll like it. It's where this Gordon fellow returns, and he walks up the path to the cottage and finds Lisa waiting at the door. Here, let's read it over. Gordon says that mm, you read it. Yes, uh, I, uh, I'm back, Susan. It's been so long, but I knew you'd come. Uh, they told me you'd gone away. I didn't go, didn't I say I'd wait for you? Uh, nothing's changed. Everything's just as it was the day I left. Yes, everything's the same, except that I love you more. Donna. Jerry. I love you. I love you. That's not in the script. I know it isn't. I'm speaking for myself. Well, so am I. It's been on my mind for weeks. Mine, too. At first, I thought it was nuts. I knew I was. Can't happen this way. The same old plot we've written so often couldn't happen to you and me. (laughs) Well, it's always been surefire, so it ought to be good enough for us. Well, uh, well, what are we going to do about it? Uh, look, look, we ought to celebrate or something. Well, I've got a new dress. Poor thing, it's never seen Earl Carroll. Well, okay, I'll drop you off at your place. I'll chase on down to the studio and tell them to pay, uh, type up this last scene for tomorrow's shooting. Yeah. I'll pick you up at 6 30. Oh, no, no, we'll save time if I meet you at Earl Carroll. Oh, so you're telling me what to do already when we're not even married. We're just engaged. Well, how about a quickie proposal? Good Lord, do I have to go through that? No, darling, just kiss me again. Only this time, make it slow motion. Hello? Hello, Luxor Studio? Is this Mike? Oh, listen, Mike, this is Donna Brown. I've been waiting here at Earl Carroll's for an hour. Did Jerry Gates come back to the studio? Oh, he didn't? You're sure? 
All right, Mike, thanks. All right, Donner. Hello, Red. What's news? You tell me. Not one item for tomorrow's column. That's funny. You usually carry more dirt than a Kansas dust storm. I hear you and Jerry finished the picture. Who told you? Lisa Garrett. When? I talked to her on the phone about 6.30. Where? Her apartment. She said she and Jerry Gates might go out and celebrate. Yeah, and from where I sit, they're doing it. What do you mean? Well, there they are. Yeah, there they are. Say, Jerry's not the guy you had to date with, is he? That's a nice item for your column, isn't it? You don't mind, Donna? Oh, not in the least, Red. That's just small talk. How about an exclusive for a headline? I'll buy it. And follow me. Hey, hey, where, where are we going? To see Jerry Gates. Oh, but Donna. Hello, Jerry. Yeah, now, Donna, look, look, I want to explain. Oh, don't bother. Now, wait a minute. Hello, Donna. So, Lisa Garen, I found you out at last. You mean found me out? Shh, shh, Donna, not so loud. What oh, are you trying I've to do? Oh, I kept quiet long enough, Jerry Gates, while you flaunted your women behind my back. Skip the double talk, will you? She's trying to create a scene. That's right. Brazen it out, you tyrant. Brazen what out? Deny it if you can that you've ensnared him. Oh, Jerry, to think how I've scrimped and saved to help you become famous. Say, is there a doctor in the house? And now that you're a success, you cast me aside. Well, this is the end. I'm through. Do you hear? I'm through. Well, that's great. Now, let's get back to where I came There's in. There's no going back now. This is for your column, Riddle. I'm going to get a divorce. Good night. Divorce? Look, she's gone out of her mind. Stop her, somebody. Hey, Donna. Hey, well, hold on, Gates. You want to make a statement? Yes, go to the devil. Donna, Donna. <laughs> do you want to be quoted, Miss Garen? Yes, by all means, I certainly do. Say that... Say that... Oh... Boy, oh boy, what a story. When asked for a statement on the marriage and impending divorce of Donna Brown and Jerry Gates, the glamorous Lisa Garen fainted for publication. In just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, the curtain will rise on the second act of our play... You'll find out more about Donna and Jerry, two people who live and work right here in Hollywood. But before the curtain goes up, I'd like to tell you about a man who lives and works right in your town. The man who brings you this program. He's your neighborhood good golf dealer, and he's not the kind of fellow who cranks out so many gallons of gasoline and lets it go at that. He knows that the gas he sells means many miles on the highway. A great many miles if you use golf no knock. And he wants those miles to be economical and carefree. That's why he's ready with that swell golf service. Your good golf dealer sure is the doctor when it comes to fixing up little things about your car. He can take the air pressure in your tires as carefully as a physician taking your pulse. He makes the engine say, ah, while he checks your motor oil. Why, he's even got a prescription for that gloomy feeling. The Golf Funny Weekly, which, incidentally, has pictures this week of some of the stars who appear in the Golf Screen Guild Theater. All those little special services have just one aim, that your miles with Golf no Knox gasoline shall be both many and happy. Why not get to know your local good golf dealer? Let him be your host along the highway, as well as here in the Golf Theater. <laughs> The Gulf Screen Guild Theater is about to rise on the second act of the comedy drama Imperfect Lady, starring Ginger Rogers, Margaret Lindsay, Clark Gable, Spencer Charters, with yours truly in the supporting cast. Light! Music! And curtain! Sorry, fellas, but I can't say anything for publication about the divorce until I talk things over with my wife, Donna Brown. Sorry, boys, I can't t- tell you who I'll name as the other woman until I talk with Lisa Garen. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen, I can't tell you what my plans will be until I talk to my producer, Manny Mason. Sorry, fellas, for the first time in his life, Manny Mason ain't got nothing to say. Good evening, everybody. This is Riddle, your Hollywood correspondent. Here's a hot item in the marriage blow of Jerry Gates and Donna Brown. This afternoon, Jerry sent Donna flowers. Take it from me to you. This looks like a reconciliation. Jerry Gates' flowers are reposing in Donna Brown's ash can. Take it from me to you, there'll be no reconciliation. It's all right, uh, boys, now, uh, right here by the swimming pool. Now play something soft and romantic. You know, a serenade. D.C., Senor Gates. One and two and two men.
Climb one more step up that ladder and I'll call the police, so help me, Jerry. What's hid from yonder window grate? Ah, it is my lady. Oh, it is my love. You really ought to book your climbing act. Yeah, I stole it from Tarzan. What poise, what manner, what control. You should see me on the flying wi- ring. Who's the gang you brought with you? Uh, genuine Italian hillbillies. Now get your head back. I'm coming in. Are you really? No, oh, I know you're going to take this very hard, Jerry, but I just don't want you around. But I want to explain about the other night at Earl Carroll. Your sense of humor is too much for me. I'm afraid I wouldn't laugh in the right place. I wasn't going to stand you up. I was just late. And Lisa Garrett? I didn't bring her. I met her at the door and she simply walked in with me. Well, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to be left alone. No. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to stay right here till we get this thing settled. For the last time, will you please go quietly? Just when we're on the very brink of an understanding? No, nope, I mean to get action. Oh, well, if it's action you want, you'll get it. Hold tight, because here it comes. Uh, wait, wait, Donna. Donna, don't push that matter. And hey, wait a minute. Yes, look out below. Opal's not here, darling, but I'm home. What? Jerry Gates, what are you doing in my apartment? I've moved in. You've moved in? Yes, by order of the court. Thanks to you, I was Judge Byers' guest at the city jail last night after that high dive into the swimming pool. What's the judge got to do with your breaking into my apartment? He told me to be firm. Oh, did he? Firm, but gentle. He said to come home to my wife and insist that we share the same hearthstone. Where's my maid, Opal? I sent her home. You did? Yes, I gave her the week off. I told her we were going to have our second honeymoon and we didn't want outsiders around. Your mother must be very proud of you. What have you done to my apartment? It looks like an auction room. Oh, that's just a few of my best odds and ends. Uh, The homey touch. Uh, Gives the room a lived-in look, don't you think? Take that overstuffed sardine off my mantle. That's a tuna. I caught it myself. Well, too bad it didn't catch you. And what, please, are your ice skates doing on my love seat? That's the best place for them. Of uh, course, from now on, this room will be known as the den. Oh, it will. Oh, oh, and uh, before I forget, I had to throw a few of your dresses on the bed, darling, uh, to make room for my things. Uh, We're a little short of closet space. Will you get out of here before I scream and wake myself Uh, up? Excuse me, darling, I'll have to answer the door. Must be some of the boys I asked in. Oh, hello, fellas. Come right in. Hello, Hello, Jerry. Hello, Red. Hope you don't mind us butting in, but we just had to get some pictures. Oh, sure, sure. Don understands, Red. Why, didn't she give you the biggest story of the year? Yeah, we'll make it snappy. Okay, boys. This is all a horrible mistake. Yes, yes, it certainly was, darling. But thank heaven we both came to our senses in time. You all set, boys? Smile, Donovan. How, how? There, that's swell. That's a swell shot. Now we'll have one of you sitting, Donna, and Jerry bending over you. Now, now, not too many, Red. Mrs. Gates is a little tired. Definitely. Yeah, she's been redecorating the apartment. Mm, Nothing like a woman's touch. Yes, you said it. Just look at my riding boots there by the fireplace. Any other woman would put slippers there, but not Donna. Nothing small about her. That's a swell shot. Uh, Now we'd like to shoot you alone, Jerry. So would I. At ten feet. You're talking a little wild there, aren't you, darling? Uh, That nerves, nerves. Just a bundle of nerves. You know, we crowded uh, too much into this one day. I've never felt better in my life. For when for all... Darling, darling, that's the sweetest thing you ever said to me. Uh, Kid? Uh... (laughs) That's a honey. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Uh, Come on, fellas. Yes, yeah, come back again, fellas. Anytime he wants a picture. We'll give you a lot of new poses. In the love seat, on top of the piano, standing on our heads. We're always at home with the press. The gates stand wide open for publicity. (laughs) Mrs. Gates, I'm sleepy. So am I. Why don't you go home? I am home. Look, how long are you going to keep this farce going? Forever, maybe. Strange as it may seem, I love you, even if you are only my wife. I'm not your wife. Well, everybody thinks you are, so I'm going to be a model husband. For the last time, will you please go home? What, desert my wife on our second honeymoon? Do you think I'm a cad? Are you really going to stay? Well, didn't I just wind up the cat and put out the clock? We, uh, we really must get a clock, darling. Home isn't home without a clock to put out. All right. If that's the way it's going to be, that's the way it's going to be. Yes, yes. I knew you'd come to your senses. I'm dreadfully thirsty. Would you step in the bathroom and get me a glass of water? Why, of course, darling. Uh, uh, do you prefer uh, cold or hot? Cold. Let it run. Uh, Where's the glass? Up on the shelf. I don't see it. (laughs) Just keep looking, darling. Hey! Hey! 
Donna. Good night, darling. And open this door. Pleasant dreams. I think you'll find the tub very comfortable if you use the bath sponge for a pillow. Sleep tight, sweetheart. Open this door. Hey, Donna, Donna. Open this door. <laughs> Good morning, Lisa. Hello, Donna. Sorry to disturb you so early. Oh, it's quite all right. Come in, Lisa. Thank you. I got up early to do some packing. You don't mind if I go on with it? Oh, not at all. Going away, Donna? Yes. Far, far away. To get your divorce, I presume. What? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll take care of that while I'm away. Well, I'm glad you've decided to do the sensible thing. You know, you've been a bit of a dog in the manger, Donna. You don't want Jerry, but you don't want any other woman to have him either. That's where you're wrong, Lisa. I don't care who has him. Then why didn't you divorce him long ago? Well, I... I guess I just never got around to it. You know how you keep putting those things off. Yes. You put it off until you could pull that scene to try and ruin my career. I wasn't even thinking of your career or you. Look, I'm in a hurry. Will you please come to the point, Lisa? Certainly. When you divorce Jerry, I'm taking him over. Oh, you are. You you don't mind? No. But aren't you forgetting Jerry may be in love with me? In love with you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> then why haven't you lived together? Why, the separate apartments? Just a blind. Jerry's lived here all the time. Oh, I don't believe it. Uh, or perhaps if you saw him, it might convince you. Let me see. Uh, this hour, he's usually in the bathroom. Jerry, darling, excuse me for disturbing you, but you've been in there so long. Come out, dear. We have company. Uh, say, it's about time. Let's stop playing games. Oh, hello, Peter. I, I uh, <clears throat> was just shaving. So, you came back to her? Yes, I guess I'm just a weak character, Lisa. No, you're soft-hearted. And Donna's taken advantage of you. Say, you're right, Lisa. I never could hold out against a woman's tears. Whose tears? When Donna came to me on her knees and begged me to give her just one more chance... <laughs> What is this? I knew it. She's kicked you, Jerry. Oh, oh, don't tell me that, Lisa. She has. Now that she's got you back, she's going to walk out on you just to get even. Oh, Donna, Donna, you wouldn't. You couldn't. Oh, tell me that isn't so. If she did, she'd be lying. She told me herself she was leaving to get a divorce. Donna, is this true? So what? So what? Oh, what about our children? Did you say... Did you say children? Oh, yes. yes. Uh, I can break the news to George. He's in high school, but... <laughs> How will I ever tell Peter? Peter? Oh, you tell her about Peter, Donna. I, I just can't. Peter? Oh, Peter. Oh. Well, <laughs> Peter's in reform school. <laughs> reform school? Now, now, now. Don't cry, Donna. The boy's smart. He may break out. <laughs> Not a bad boy at heart. No, no, he's just a little precocious. Uh, what did Peter do? Well, he uh, he set William on fire. <laughs> William, uh, uh, William, uh, yes, William, William, yes, yes, he's our baby. He, he's just uh, how old is he, Donna? You you've been closer to him than I have. Uh, just a year. Yes, yes, he's still on the bottle. <laughs> and if you take over, Lisa. Oh, don't worry, I'll show you how to mix up his formula. It's idiotic. Idiotic? Oh, no. The doctor says William may be a little backward. But he's certainly not an idiot. I mean, it's insane for me to waste time trying to help someone who won't be helped. Who's so sunk in the mire of domesticity, it's positively sickening. Lisa, you're not Lee. I most certainly am. But aren't you going to take over? Be a mother to my children? And become the mother of more Roman candles? No, thank you. <laughs> good morning and goodbye. <laughs> Exit Lisa. And now, exit Donna. Will you stand yourself in some corner out of the way while I finish my packing? Oh, are we going someplace? I am. Well, I'll come along. I've got nothing to do. Let's see. Will I need my stuffed tuna and my ice cake? I'm going alone. Donna, you're going to desert me when I've just become the father of three children? <laughs> oh, Jared. Please stop kidding. Oh, look, Donna, you, you and I don't matter, but the, those three kids, they need you. <laughs> If you don't stop talking like that, I'll begin to believe it myself. Yes, and their father needs you. Does he? Really? 
And what we both need is someone to marry us. But uh, what will people say? I've got a little farm up in the valley. And my next-door neighbor is uh, Justice of the Peace, who's been marrying couples quietly for years. Well, I, I suppose we owe it to society. Whether we like it or not. But you know, darling, I'm... I'm awfully afraid we're going to like it. Like it? Mm -hmm. Sweetheart, we're going to love it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to our new weekly feature, The Question Box, to find out what the stars really know about Hollywood. Anyone giving an incorrect answer must pay a forfeit by doing anything I ask them to. Uh, say, Rod, can yeah. we sort of do without this forfeit business? Last week you made Cary Grant talk like Donald Duck. <laughs> well, wait till we see, wait till you see what we've got for you, Clark. Uh, look, pal, couldn't I change places with John Conti or something? He just sits over there laughing at us. <laughs> what? I've been sitting here thinking and thinking hard. Yes, uh, about what, for instance? Well, about all our friends who are listening to us. About you, ladies and gentlemen, and about how, when you're buying most things, you do a bit of shopping to find out just what you want. You look for the kind of things that suit your taste. And when you find what you want, you usually stick to it. Well, now why isn't it good sense to do the same thing about gasoline? Find the gas that really suits your car, and then get that kind from now on. Or maybe you have tried some different gasolines and not noticed much difference. But have you tried Gulf No Knox? Because Gulf No Knox ethyl is a knock-proof gasoline. Raised to such a high-octane rating that it ends motor knock under all normal driving conditions. You can expect a smoother, quieter ride the very first time you get a tank full of Gulf No Knock. And from then on, we sincerely believe you'll know that you've found the gas you want. And you'll continue to tell your good Gulf dealer to... Fill her up with Gulf No Knock's gasoline. <laughs> Now for the question box. The box is being opened, the stars are ready, and the first question goes to Clark Gable. Clark, has since MGM adopted the Roaring Lion as a trademark, uh, do they still use the same lion? Well, it looks like the same lion to me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Clark, but it isn't. The lion they use now is the grandson of the original lion. The grandson? Yeah. Uh, well, uh... It's my turn now. Yeah, it's your turn. That, what do I have to That do? wasn't a very good one. Well, there aren't any excuses except that I'm sorry, Clark, and the question box, so you're going to have to pay a forfeit. I'll tell you what you have to do. You will have to spell uh, maliciousness. Maliciousness? Yeah. And when you come to a vowel, whistle it. To oh, a vowel, whistle it. <laughs> whistle the vowel. I can't even spell malicious. <laughs> right there. Well, try. Right. Here goes. All right. Uh, M... You. That's a vowel. Oh, how about? <laughs> that was well done, Clark. Well done. And now, now the next question goes to Margaret Lindsay, and it comes in two parts. First, if your telephone line was down ten years ago, and you sent a repairman, uh, you sent for a repairman, which of the following people might have shown up to fix it? Bob Hope, Clark Gable, Marlena Dietrich, Gary Cooper, or Connie Boswell? Well, it seems to me that I read that Clark Gable was a telephone lineman one time. Yes, that's right, Margaret. Ten years ago, Clark Gable was a telephone lineman. Now for the second part of the question, Margaret. Uh, why did I include Bob Hope, Marlena Dietrich, Gary Cooper, and Connie Boswell in the question? Well, it couldn't be because they're all going to be on the uh, Gulf Screen Guild Theater next week. Is that it? Yes, it could, and they are going to be. You're a whiz tonight, Margaret. That's really all right. Now the next question goes to Ginger Rogers. I'm ready. All right, Ginger. Ginger, now, what's Annabella's full name? Huh, what is that again? What's Annabella's full name? Annabella. Uh-huh. Annabella, uh, full name. Annabella. Um, <laughs> do you mind, Roger, if I ask you a question? Not at all, Ginger. You go right ahead. What's my forfeit? <laughs> well, we'll come to that. But first, you should be interested to know that Annabella's full name doesn't even have Annabella in it. It's Suzanne Georgette Carpentier. And now for your forfeit. When you were a little girl, when you were a little girl, Ginger, just learning how to talk, was there a poem your mother always used to ask you to say because she thought it was cute? Yeah, well, it was awful silly. Well, that's what I mean. Let's hear it. Oh, my mother will die. Um, 
there was the big Millie Sand who saw Biddle Lump sitting on a white sock, chewing got a wump. Along came big Billy Sand, said Biddle Lump, Simmy Gum, said the Biddle Lump to the big Millie Sand, go, I thought. That's all. <laughs> Until next week when we bring you Connie Boswell, Gary Cooper, Marlena Dietrich, Bob Hope, and of course, Oscar Bradley and his golf order. This is John Conti saying good night for your neighborhood good golf deal. Selznick's Gone with the Wind will shortly be released by MGM. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.